to sharing about how we make fresh apples last an entire year in the fridge, I have a proof of life video for you. <laughs> This video clip was shot in August. You can see there I have cucumbers and dill in the background was making pickles. These apples are Honeycrisp that we picked last year, 11 months ago, and they're still beautiful. They're still crisp and juicy inside, and they're a joy to eat fresh. With just a few tips and tricks, you can definitely get apples to last a very long time, up to a year in storage. The first thing to know is that variety matters. Some apples are really great long-term stores and some are not. My very favorite tried and true is the Honeycrisp. That one routinely lasts for a year in my fridge. That is my favorite to store long-term. In general, apples that are ripe towards the end of the season will store longer and apples that tend to be a little bit more dense and crisp will store longer as well. To get them to store a long time, the apples absolutely must be fresh from an orchard. This will not work with store-bought. Store-bought apples are probably already many months old to begin with. And ideally, you will pick them yourself. So seek out a you-pick farm. This is for a couple reasons. You're going to treat the apples like super fragile eggs. If you buy already picked apples, even from an orchard, they were probably handled with not quite as much love as you're going to handle them with. They were probably transferred between multiple bins. They might have even been washed which is something we don't want because apples have a natural waxy bloom on them that is protective and helps keep in moisture so if that's washed off they won't store as long either the apples should be picked when they're at their peak ripeness one clue that your apples are ripe is that they start falling on the ground i like to taste test them but really they should come off the tree very nicely when you lift them up in a gentle way no yanking no pulling required just lift them up and if they come off in a gratifying way they're probably ripe and if you're picking at a commercial orchard, make sure that you are picking only the most perfect, pristine apples that you can. Scrutinize and look at every one before it leaves the tree and goes into your bag. Don't pick it if it has a bruise, a bump, a blemish on it. Look for only the most perfect ones. And don't use an apple picker. There's a very high risk that you'll pierce the apple. And also don't pick them up off the ground. Even if it doesn't appear to have a visible bruise, there's probably one under the skin from falling and it won't last long in storage. We do one thing that's a little bit extra, especially with Honeycrisp, they have a very strong stem. So we have this little stem cutter. So once we pick an apple, we clip the stem off and put it in our bag and that makes sure that the stem doesn't pierce another apple. If we're picking at our home orchard or our neighbor's house, we like to pick into doubled paper grocery bags. If you're at a commercial orchard, avoid picking into something that you have to dump the apples out of like a wooden crate. I greatly prefer to pick them right into the bag that you're gonna take them home in. You've probably picked up on that the goal here is to be as gentle as you possibly can with them along every step of the way because once you get the apples home, you are going to sort them. I tend to sort them into three different piles, three different categories. First category is absolutely perfect, not a blemish at all. The second group is things like a little mark that's on the skin, but that's not an open wound. Things like a little wart, that's fine. That goes into pile number two as well. And then the third category are open wounds. So that's little things like that peck mark there, maybe a bug hole, maybe if your fingernail pierced the apple, um, bruises as well, I tend to put in the third category. Basically anything that's going to not make the apple last as long in storage. And I think everybody will have to grade their apples kind of on their own scale, depending on the quality that you're starting with in the first place. It's possible that you won't have any perfect pristine ones and they might all have little blemishes. Just know that you will get the longest life out of the ones that are perfect. If they're not quite perfect, you can still likely get a long storage life out of them. It just might not be quite a year. Usually when we're grading apples, how we set up is that I am the one who looks at them because I have definitely the most attention to detail for that kind of thing of the house. I grade each one. I look at it on all sides, especially in the top where the stem is and the bottom end. And then I call out a one, two, or three, and I hand the apple to Carl, and he's standing by and has three different bags, and he gently puts the apples into the bags depending on the number that I tell him. We store the apples in these heavy-duty ice bags. Of course, you could use apple bags, too. These are just easier for me to find. What I like about them is that they have a drawstring at the top and that they're thick. They do a good job of protecting the apples, keeping moisture in, but I can shut them and have a little hole at the top that lets gases out. Once I tie the bag shut, I label it with the variety and whether it's a number one, two, or three quality. The number one, most prime apples get used last because they last the longest. The number three get used first, 
and then the number two get used second. And that's it, the apples are ready to store. They definitely need to be stored in the refrigerator. We have an extra fridge in our basement that we use to store all of our important things like carrots and pickles and sauerkraut and all of our bags of apples where they will keep well into winter and even next summer. If you found this video helpful, I would love it if you could give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel so that you are the first to know whenever a new video is posted.